This morning, I want to again extend my most sincere condolences to the families and friends of the victims of the terrible Nova Scotia attacks. Since yesterday, I've had the chance to speak with Constable Chad Morrison, the RCMP officer who was wounded, as well as Constable Heidi Stevenson's family. On behalf of all Canadians, I thank them for their service and their sacrifice. Yesterday, when I uh, offered my sympathies to the RCMP officers who support me, um, I was amazed to see how many of them knew Heidi uh, and had incredibly fond memories of her. They'd worked with her on the musical ride. They uh, remembered her as an extraordinary person. And it really goes to show just how tightly knit not just the RCMP is as a force, but how close we are as a country. Yesterday I had the opportunity to mention to the RCMP people around me uh, that I was offering my, uh, symp my sympathy to them. I was touched to hear about Heidi's story, people who served with her, people who was at the musical uh, council with her, how she was part of, uh, she was an extraordinary person. And it makes us uh, think how uh, the RCMP is tight knit, but also as a country, we're all connected one to the other. Yesterday afternoon, I visited the Canadian Police and Peace Officers Memorial on Parliament Hill to pay tribute to Constable Stevenson and to recognize the contributions of all law enforcement members to keep us safe. I also spoke to a number of colleagues from Nova Scotia, both past and present and sought Senator Stan Kutcher's advice, both as a Nova Scotian and as a mental health expert. These calls reinforced what we all know about Nova Scotia, that it's a special place where people stick together and look out for each other. This week, we are all Nova Scotian. The families of the victims can count on the unwavering support not only of their neighbors, but of every single Canadian. It's been weeks now that we're, we're ask, we've asked people to follow the experts' advice to protect your health and that of others. Confinement, social distancing, and physical distancing is an adjustment for a big majority for them. But for some, the consequences of the pandemics are uh, much deeper than just an adjustment. The virus has been and to, as for effects, to increase the inequalities that were existing in our society. Those most vulnerable, including uh, the elderly, the uh, homeless youth, those without a job, and the single parents' families are particularly touched by COVID-19. At the same time, the amount, the total amount of people who need help to get through these difficult times have also increased. Way before the pandemic the changes our lives, uh, the Goodwill organizations that care, the organizations were there for our communities. I'm thinking of PYO and Park Extension, who helping uh, the youth at risk, or the Risto, Risto Saint Michel offering. Uh, low cost uh, prices in uh, Papineau writing as well as across the country community organizations are an essential resource for those most vulnerable and their mission during this pandemic isn't changing but they need to have more support to help a clientele that is growing so today the government is putting up the emergency fund to support, uh, for community support. This uh, fund will have an envelope of $350 million to support community organizations and uh, non-profit organizations. A part of those funds and will go directly to small uh, independent organizations and the rest will be sent to through national organizations such as United Way, the Canadian Community uh, Center and the Red Cross Fund. And it's through those that our community organizations can help to increase their amount of uh, volunteers and to offer more service uh, for transportation or delivery and for the uh, elderly and the handicapped people. And we want to give more resources to organizations to adapt to the difficulties and realities linked to the pandemic. Charities and nonprofit organizations were doing crucial work to help our communities. 
Their mission has always been to support people in their time of need, and that hasn't changed. But COVID-19 is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on those organizations because more people need help. For example, back in March, one United Way partner in Winnipeg made and distributed 1,475 emergency kits for families, seniors, and homeless people in just five days. Organizations have also had to change the way they deliver services because of the rules that everyone has to follow to keep each other safe. Here in Ottawa, there are a number of organizations that are focused on serving isolated seniors. Usually, they have day programs where seniors can socialize, participate in activities, eat well, and maintain a connection to their community. That's no longer possible because of COVID-19, so organizations are now delivering meals and providing support via phone. In Toronto, Tropicana Community Services is now helping vulnerable youth access their COVID-19 benefits. It takes resources to make these kinds of adjustments, resources these groups don't have because they're spread so thin, trying to help as many people as possible. So to support charities and nonprofits in their important work, our government is setting up the $350 million Emergency Community Support Fund. A portion of these funds will go directly to smaller, independent, frontline organizations, and the rest will flow through national organizations like the United Way, Community Foundations Canada, and the Red Cross that can get funds to local organizations and vulnerable people quickly. This is money for things like training volunteers, increasing at-home deliveries for seniors, or driving people with disabilities to appointments. With this fund, we're giving more resources to charities and nonprofits so they can adapt to the new realities and difficulties brought on by this pandemic. Notre gouvernement our government has put in place a, a three-step plan to help those who have lost their job and lost their salary and helping the small businesses to, that have a cash flow issues. And I have another announced for the emergency salary subsidy to give up to $847 per week per employee to the small companies to help them keep their workers. We are sending a calculator on the Revenue Canada Agency website to help companies determine what this salary subvention will, subsidy will uh, represent. And the companies can make their requests starting next Monday, April 27th, later today. The president of the, account, of the board, uh, our treasury board, will give more details regarding the deployment of this program. This is also helping business owners and entrepreneurs adapt to a new reality with the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. This new measure gives qualifying employers up to $847 per employee each week so they can keep people on the payroll. Today, we're launching a new calculator on the CRA website so businesses can determine the amount they can expect to claim through the wage subsidy. Employers will be able to apply as of this Monday, April 27th. Later today, Minister Duclos will be providing more details regarding the rollout of this program. And I want to turn now to some encouraging news on the innovation front. Our supercluster initiative brings together small, medium-sized and large companies, academic institutions and not-for-profit organizations to generate bold ideas and innovate. So a few weeks ago, the digital technology supercluster challenged its network of over 500 firms to come up with solutions to help Canadians get through this pandemic. They received over 300 submissions and they are now moving forward on a number of key projects. Toronto's DNA Stack is developing a new cloud-based network that allows researchers who are looking to improve our ability to diagnose and treat COVID-19 to share their findings. Another company, FoodX, is working with its partners to develop an e-grocery management system to make sure our healthcare workers, seniors and others have access to fresh food during this crisis. Canadian innovators are among the best in the world and it's great to see so many of them use their talents to help our communities.
This is yet another example of what we can achieve when we work together as Team Canada. But this weekend and the coming weeks, you can count on us to continue to find other ways to help you. We will continue to do our parts as you continue to do your part. It's been about six weeks that you stay at home, that you wash your hands regularly and that you keep two meter distance with others. A month and a half, it's long. It is long, but your efforts are fruitful. We see early but positive signs that we're going in the right direction, and it is in great part due to you. So continue. Let's continue to follow the experts' advices, and together we will get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. We'll now go to the phone lines for questions. Just one question, one follow-up. Over to you, Operator. Thank you. Merci. First question, Christy Kirkup. The Globe and Mail, line opens. Good morning, Prime Minister. How will you help millions of Canadians who now find themselves without medical benefits during a global pandemic? Um, we, uh, we know that the way we get through this particular crisis is by pulling together and making sure those who are most vulnerable get the support they need to stay healthy, to stay isolated, and get through this. That's key, not just uh, to remain, remain true to our values and protecting people, including the most vulnerable, but it's also key to being able to recover quickly once we're through this pandemic. That's why we continue to work with partners across the country to highlight uh, gaps and challenges and things that we need to do more to help people uh, afford uh, cost of living that is in many cases going up because of this crisis. We will continue uh, to work with partners to make sure we're getting that help out there. We acknowledge and recognize that during this pandemic, there's a lot of people who are suffering and need help. That's why we have put in place measures that will help a lot of people. And we recognize as well that there's always people who need more help. That's why we are working with our partners and with people across the country, with other uh, levels of governments to, to get through this uh, and get back stronger uh, when this pandemic will be over. Millions, millions of Canadians are finding themselves so without medical benefits because they have been laid off. And Dr. Eric Hoskins has said that Ottawa could cover the cost of the provinces and territories bringing Canadians into their formularies as an interim step to help. Is this something your government is willing to do? We're going to continue to work with all sorts of uh, experts and uh, smart, uh, smart folks making recommendations from across the country in different ways to make sure we're doing everything we need uh, to help Canadians through this crisis. Uh, we've always, uh, we're always looking for more things to do and we will uh, continue to do the things that need to be done in order to help Canadians. Thank you. Next question, operator. Thank you. Merci. Prochaine question, Michel Lamarche, TV Nouvelle. À vous. On the salary subsidy, we understand that uh, the registration will be taken starting next Monday, but can you tell us, Mr. Trudeau, at what point will businesses that are asking it will have money to pay those employees? The reality is that during this crisis, uh, people need help almost immediately, and we need to deliver this help as quickly as possible. We recognize that the salary subsidy would take a little time to deliver, and we're still working on this. The registration, as you said, started or starting next Monday, and we hope to be able to have the money coming quickly after this, but it will take a few days. It will take a few days and, and to, to the minimum, but that's why we made sure to give access to credit for companies, the small businesses, the larger companies, in order to uh, get through these moments. The moment is coming. The calculator, the online calculator, is now there to enable the companies to see exactly how much money 
he will receive from the government in the days coming and in the weeks coming and to do make the correct to loan the correct amount of loans for to pay people correctly quickly as possible and that's why we're working extremely extremely hard uh, to get help out to people we started with the canada emergency response benefit which has uh, now helped over eight million people across this country and made a significant difference but we also want people to get the uh, we want other people to get the emergency wage subsidy which means uh, working with businesses to keep people on the payroll uh, through this so that they can not only retain a job but have a job uh, to get back quickly to as soon as the economy picks up again. Uh, we have uh, announced that on Monday people will be able to uh, register for this online. Uh, as of today, however, they can see what the amount uh, they're likely to be able to get through this and uh, be confident in their ability to access credit from banks, from uh, agencies like BDC and EDC to be able to um, support people right now in this time of need. Uh, we're moving as quickly as we can. We move very quickly on the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Uh, we hope to be able to get this help out to, uh, to businesses to keep employees on their payroll as quickly as possible. What does it mean quickly? Will it go as quick as the Canadian emergency response benefit? In terms of the salary subsidies, it will be a bit longer. A week, two weeks, with, with the money, uh, when the money starts to circulate? Mr. Duclos will have more to say on this in a few hours, but, but people working at the Canadian Revenue Agencies are working extremely hard to send this money as quickly as possible after uh, the registration occurs. But it will take a few, uh, a little time. But people can know that this money will come and shouldn't hesitate to access to the credit offered by banks and our institutions like uh, BDC and EDC. Thank you. Merci. Next question, Charlie Pinkerton, I politics. Line open. Good morning, Prime Minister. Yesterday, Public Safety Minister Bill Blair said he intends to introduce stricter gun laws as soon as possible. You said your government was on the verge of introducing an assault rifle ban before the pandemic caused Parliament to suspect. Will a gun control bill be introduced in the, rest in the restricted version of Parliament that we see during the pandemic, or will it have to wait until Parliament returns to normal sittings? Uh, Obviously, uh, we are all reeling from the tragedy in Nova Scotia, uh, and uh, our focus right now is on supporting those families as quickly as possible and as, as well as we possibly can. Um, on gun control legislation, we made strong commitments to move forward with that uh, rapidly. As you mentioned, we were on the verge of bringing it in before Parliament was suspended uh, through COVID-19, and we're now looking at uh, the right way and the right moment to bring it forward. The tragedy in Nova Scotia simply uh, reinforces and underlines how important it is uh, for us to continue to move forward on strengthening gun control in this country, uh, and we will do that uh, uh, at uh, the appropriate time. La tragédie en Nouvelle-Écosse a souligné à quel point c'est important de continuer à avancer. Is to continue to get forward on on the control of, uh, of firearms control, and we made some commitments to advance quickly on this, and we were about to introduce um, uh, measures to restrict the assault type weapons in Canada before Parliament be susp uh, is suspended uh, due to COVID-19, and now we're, we're, we're looking at how and when would be the right time uh, to reintroduce uh, this uh, bill. But we will take the time to make sure it's done the right way. So which of your government's promised gun control measures will it be that it introduces first? Will it be the assault rifle ban or something else perhaps influenced by what happened over the weekend? Uh, the legislation on the assault uh, rifle ban was uh, ready, almost ready to go uh, when we, uh, when the Parliament suspended. So I expect that will be the first uh, measures we bring forward. But of course, uh, as we learn more about this uh, terrible, terrible tragedy uh, in Nova Scotia, uh, we will 
uh, keep reflecting on ways that we need to help Canadians stay safe in their communities, in their homes, and across the country. Thank you. One more question on the phone, please, operator. Thank you. Merci. Pour cette question, Mélanie Marquis, La Presse. À vous.